So you guys might recognize this GPU. It's my GTX 1080 for the win from EVGA and it, it used to not work. Long story short, I made a cover for this or a new shroud. Um, and then I touched some wires I shouldn't touch and it shorted the card out and it died and I was gonna RMA it Didn't have the original fans. I just could find some knockoff fans and I couldn't because it needed to be in its stock configuration So it kind of just sat idle But in that video the one where I, where I broke that a lot of you are like, you know, you should try to bake that card it, It'll bring it back to life and at the time I was like Why would that work? But I did a little research on the whole bake your GPU thing, little, let me emphasize that, to kind of figure out wh where that all started, why people do it, why people get so upset when you call it a fix. And the idea behind it makes sense, I guess. I didn't expect it to do anything, but since you guys wanted to see it, and I wasn't gonna do anything else with it, I figured why not, let's tear it down, throw it in the old magic oven, and then see what happens when it comes out. And I even had two, because I'm good at breaking GPUs, I broke that one too. So I broke them both in kind of a similar way, and I said, you know what, let's bake them both, and it gives us a better shot of something good happening. This one, sad to say, never came back to life. But when I put that one back into this old computer and hit the play button, expecting literally nothing to happen, I was pretty surprised to see the screen turn on. And it keeps turning on. Every time I've hit that power button, that GPU has come back to life, given me an image, and from what little testing I've done, seems to be working just as good as it used to, at least on that old system. So today we're gonna kinda take a closer look on how well it performs, if it does perform at least similar to what it did before. If we stress test it, is it just gonna break again? And try to understand why everybody thinks that putting a GPU in a stove or an oven works, and then also why the internet hates it when you call that a fix. Before we do any stress testing or gaming, let's kind of talk about why why this method is supposed to work. And let me preface this by saying that I'm not an expert. Also, this should not be your first go-to solution. If you break your graphics card, um, you should probably seek other avenues before you just say YOLO and throw it in the oven. But in the end, it's your equipment. Just know that if you bake it, you're probably not gonna be able to you know, RMA it. But that being said, the idea behind baking a GPU from the little bit of research I've done is that it basically is supposed to reflow the solder on an old card. So the idea here is an old card, as it ages, the solder kind of gets hard and contracts and eventually cracks. You crack, you might not even be able to see, but it's a crack big enough that there's no longer contact. And then when you bake the card, it's supposedly supposed to liquefy that solder again and let it, you know, remake contact. And the idea is that, yes, it might work, but since the solder's old, it's just gonna crack again and you're gonna be back down to square one with a broken GPU. Makes sense. For a card this old, I can see that being the case. Old solder, cracked, baked it, nothing happened. That card's not that old. Also, the reason that I thought, you know, this doesn't really sound like something that worked for me is because these didn't break just sitting idle. These broke because I broke them. This one, I dropped a, a fan clip on this back, on this exposed board and well, shorted it. This guy, I made a cover for it and I touched two leads to the RGB connector together. Sparks, magic, and no more video. So knowing that I shorted the cards, baking them didn't seem like anything that was gonna fix a short. It didn't tell it did. But one of the biggest things everybody said is you can't reflow solder on a GPU in an oven because the oven doesn't get hot enough. Now we could just Google solder melting point and then say, well, the oven's only at 375, so yeah, it probably won't or will melt, but instead we're just gonna do the same thing again. Oven 375, I'm gonna take this piece of solder, which is, yeah, probably not, or maybe not the same solder that's used on a GPU, but it's what I have, it's solder. We're gonna bake it for 10 minutes like we did with the GPU and see, does it melt? A few moments later.
So our 10 minutes is up and, well, the solder is melted. So it appears that the argument that solder doesn't melt at 375 degrees Fahrenheit is false. So, so if that's true, the, the solder on the card should have melted and quite possibly could have reflowed. So at least we know that. So for concern two, we're going to look at gaming. So I don't have a lot of games loaded on this old system and we're going to have some bottlenecking probably by my 2500K, but after we get that system upgraded, we will test this card again if it survives. But we're going to play uh, Overwatch. I play Overwatch quite a bit. So I'm going to see if it looks the same or acts the same as it did when I used to use it over there before it broke. I'll even put the cover on there just, just so we're not giving it any sort of advantage here. I haven't played on uh, like a 60 hertz refresh rate monitor in a long time. But essentially, I'm just going to see... I'm not going to play for a long time. I just want to see if there's any hitching or stuttering or anything that would indicate that this is not performing like at least like it used to. So let's see what our, first let's see what our settings are. So 2560 by 1440, performance stats are on, no FPS limit, and we're on ultra. 140, 130. Oh, I don't have my key bindings either. Oh my God. Yeah, sitting around right about, right about 150, 145. Got wrecked. New map, still about a 140, 150, 145. Seemed, I mean, from what I remember, I normally played on high before on that one because I wanted the best frame rate, but that seems pretty normal for what, what it used to be. I think it like on high, so one below ultra, I, I normally was about 168, 165 maybe, 160. And so far, no hitching or stuttering or anything out of the ordinary, so I mean, it seems normal. A lot more stuff's happening, dropping down to the 90s, 100, seems pretty normal to me. So, 64 degrees Celsius on the GPU, 120, 130, temp 130 FPS, really depends on how much stuff's going on in-game, ultra on 1440p. No hitching or stuttering or nothing feels out of the ordinary, actually everything feels, do I say, quite normal. Will this continue indefinitely or only last a certain amount of time? I don't know. But for now, everything acts from what I remember exactly how it did. So now I guess we'll do some stress testing. So I guess we'll start with the classic Furmark test and see where it takes us. Let's make sure that the old NVIDIA GTX 99%, 100% utilization. 65 degrees, so it'll just cook off for a while and see if it stops working. So it's been 36 minutes of Furmark. Card's still working. Temperatures are solid 70 degrees, which actually is better than what it used to be, but I did have the card previously mounted vertically close to the glass, so that's pretty much all due to airflow. But in a nutshell, the, the FPS is the same as it used to be. There was no stutters or hiccups. Um, well, the RGBs don't work, but that's kind of what led me into this in the beginning. But other than that, the card is literally, at least on the surface, seems to be operating just as good as it always has. Oh, I guess, and also we proved that at least this solder does melt in the stove at the temperature I had this card at. So, I mean, if, if these are similar in any way, technically it should have maybe reflowed, had the opportunity. And if I my short maybe popped a connection, it could have reconnected. Is that the case? I don't know. All I know is I put it in the oven. When it came out, it worked again. Will it work forever? I don't know. You have to stick around. We'll test it later. We'll test it at a later date. If it does die, I'll let you know. But I use it quite often and I'm not having any problems. So in the simplest terms or the simplest definitions of a fix, it wasn't working. I did a thing and now it is working. Yeah, it's fixed. Will it stay fixed? To be determined. Like I said before though, this shouldn't be your first course of action. If you break your GPU, try to get it RMA, send it back to the manufacturer or pay somebody that knows what they're doing to fix it. But if you have a card, you don't have any money and you're just like, well, it's either gonna be broken or I can try this. Then at least in my sample size of two, you got a 50% chance of it maybe working for you. And that's better than 0% chance of it getting fixed sitting on your desk. I don't know. Work for me. If you got any ideas for any other testing methodology you want me to try on it or just have a couple cents you want to throw down there, I'll be reading, so 
Till next time.